In this video, I'll show you a fast, easy, reliable, and free way to track student attendance using Google Docs and the smartphone that you probably already carry around in your pocket. I find that this system works well in a classroom environment because if you're anything like me, when you walk into your classroom, the first thing you do is prepare the technology. That is, you either pull a laptop out of your bag and plug it into the projector or log into the computer provided by the school. Either of these tasks takes a couple of minutes. I used to keep attendance in an Excel spreadsheet on my personal laptop, but one day I realized that by the time I pulled it out of my bag, plugged it in, connected it to the projector, logged on, and opened the gradebook in Excel, I could have already taken roll using some other means. That's when I began to research ways of recording attendance with my smartphone, since it's always available and ready to go. Now, while my computer wakes up and logs me in, I take roll on my smartphone, reducing the amount of downtime at the beginning of each class meeting. Let's begin with a demonstration of how this works. First, let's look at what I do to track attendance at the beginning of each class meeting. I begin by unlocking my phone, navigating to the appropriate Google form, I store links to each of the forums I use during the term in the Notes app on my phone, but you could also bookmark them and open them from within your web browser. And then I check off each student who's present. I hit Submit, and attendance is done. Once I hit Submit, I'm presented with two options, Edit Your Response and Submit Another Response. Edit your response is useful because it allows you to update the response you just submitted. So if a student walks in or out shortly after you've finished taking attendance, it takes only a moment to update the record. So that's how easy it is to use this system to take attendance. But the power of Google Forms is its ability to link to Google Sheets to organize and analyze the data that you input. With Google Sheets, we can do things like generate a simple count of the number of days each student has attended, generate a count of the total number of course meetings, and calculate the student's attendance grade based on those figures. You can even set up rules to automatically drop one or more absences from a student's attendance grade. And if you really wanted to go all out, you could even incorporate these data into a full grade book maintained in Google Sheets that would update students' attendance grades live as you record attendance in class. So let's take a look at what Google Sheets automatically records when you hit the Submit button on your phone. Sheets records two columns of data. First, a timestamp that provides the precise time at which a submission was made. Second, the names of each student recorded as present. With these data and a few simple formulas, we can create this, an easy to read and understand record of each student's attendance that can easily be imported into any spreadsheet-based gradebook. So now that you've had a chance to see the finished product in action, let's take a look at how to actually create the form and corresponding sheet that you will need to make this system work. First, you're going to need a Google account. You may already have one of these if you have a Gmail, YouTube, or other Google service account. You may also have one through your institution, since many universities use the Google ecosystem for email. If you don't have a Google account already, visit accounts google.com slash sign up and follow the prompts to create one for free. Once you're logged into your Google account, navigate to Google Drive at drive.google.com. I'm going to start by creating a new Google Sheet. I like to use a naming system that comprises the course number, a year and term designator, and either attendance sheet or attendance form depending on whether I'm creating the sheet or the form. For example, since this will be an attendance sheet for COM 101 for the fall 2015 semester, I will name it COM 101 15 Fall Attendance Sheet. This type of naming convention allows me to easily identify documents relevant to the current term. Now that I've renamed the sheet, I will also rename the active tab. 
we're going to add several of the tabs by the end of the project, so I want to be sure to rename them along the way to something that will help me keep track of which tab is which. This is the tab that's going to display the finished or transformed data, so I'm going to give it a finished name. Attendance. Next I'm going to create a few column headers. Name. Grade. Number of times attended and number of meetings. Next I'll go ahead and type in my students' names. Now that I have these data entered, it's time to create the form that will link to this spreadsheet. Let's navigate back to Google Drive and create a new form. I'm going to rename this form using the same naming convention. Now that I've renamed the form, it's time to edit the automatically generated question to make it appropriate for tracking attendance. First, for the question title, I'll put students. For question type, choose checkboxes. Now it's time to enter each student's name. Here's where we save some effort by starting the spreadsheet first. Tab back over to the spreadsheet. Select your students' names and copy them to the clipboard. That's Command-C on a Mac or Control-C on a PC. Now tab back, select the first answer choice, and paste. Use Command-V on a Mac or Control-V on a PC. It should enter each of your students into a separate answer choice. If for some reason this doesn't work for you, I'd recommend trying again using the Google Chrome web browser, or if that also fails, enter each student manually as a separate answer choice. Once your roster is entered in its entirety, scroll to the bottom of the form and make sure the option to allow responders to edit responses after submitting is checked. This is what will allow you to update your response should a student arrive after you record attendance. Now we're ready to link the form and sheet together. Click on Responses and choose Select Response Destination. Click the option to use a new sheet in an existing spreadsheet and click Choose. Navigate to the spreadsheet that you just created and choose that as your response destination. If we tab back over to the sheet we created earlier, you'll see that a new tab has been created called Form Responses 1. This is where the data from your responses will be stored. We now have only one more thing to do with the form, and that's to record the URL for the form so that you can access it easily upon walking into class. Tab back over to the form and click Send Form. I like to use the short URL version, but it really doesn't matter. Record this URL on your smartphone where you think you can access it easily, either as a bookmark in your web browser or as a link in a note. Now we can test this link to make sure it works. Looks good. From this point forward, we'll be working exclusively in Google Sheets. To make it easier to illustrate the changes we're going to make, I'm going to enter a few example attendance records. Feel free to do this as well. You can always manually delete them before the first day of class.
Now that I've submitted several attendance records, let's make the analysis in our sheet more useful. As you saw in the demonstration at the beginning of this tutorial, Sheets automatically records two columns of data. A timestamp of when each submission was made, and the names of each student recorded as present. The first thing we need to do is create a redundant copy of these raw data. This is to avoid reference errors that would otherwise be created when deleting or modifying submission entries. To do this, create a new tab. I'll rename it Copy. And in cell A1, enter the following formula. With cell A1 still selected, click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag over into column B2 to copy this formula. Now, with both A1 and B1 selected, click on the bottom right corner of B1 and drag down. I'm going to drag down 100 rows. That should give me plenty of opportunities for submissions. You should now have a copy of each submission that will update with each new submission that you make. Once again, this step was only to avoid reference errors created by Google Sheets were you to edit or delete a response entry in the Form Responses 1 worksheet. Next, we need to transpose these data so that we have a list of days on the y-axis, a list of student names on the x-axis, and a mark indicating the student was present in the intersecting cell. To do this, let's create a new tab. I'll rename mine Transpose. And in cell A3, enter the following formula. Once again, I'll drag this formula down to row 100. This gives me space for 98 records, essentially 98 class meetings, which is far more than I should ever need for a single term. Once you release, the formulas will auto-update and populate, creating a list of dates that automatically updates each time you submit a new response. Next, we need to create a list of students along the x-axis as column headers. The easiest way to do this is to transpose the list of student names we already have in the Students tab. To do this, select cell B1 and type equals transpose, open parentheses, and then tab over to Attendance and select the range of cells with student names. Type close parentheses to end the formula and press Return. The list of your student names should now appear as column headers. Next, we need to create a series of formulas that will search each response looking to see whether the student's name is mentioned and, if it is, to make some sort of mark indicating the student was present. Let's start with our first student. In cell B3, type equals if error, open parentheses, if, open parentheses, find, open parentheses, B1, copy, exclamation point, B2, quotation mark, X, quotation mark, close parentheses, close parentheses. What does this formula do? The if error part of the formula instructs the formula to ignore errors, meaning that it will leave the cell blank if a student does not appear in the response. If we did not include the if we did not include the if error argument, every time a student missed class, the formula would return pound sign value. Besides being unsightly, a spreadsheet filled with errors would complicate our analysis and the formula would return an error. Besides being unsightly, a spreadsheet filled with errors would complicate our analysis and summary later on. 
The next if command instructs the formula to find the text of cell B1, the student's name, and the text of cell B2 on the copy tab. And if it does find the student's name in that cell, it will print an X in the cell. Before we copy this formula to additional rows and columns, however, we need to add a couple of absolute cell reference modifiers, instructing sheets to hold some of these values constant. First, we need to place a dollar sign between the B and 1 in B1. This absolute cell reference modifier will make it so that as we copy the formula down through the rows, it will always seek to match the text in the first row. If we did not include this dollar sign, the formula would instead attempt to match the text to each preceding row, which would mean that it would be checking to see whether X or blank was present rather than the student itself. We also need to place a dollar sign before B2. This absolute cell reference modifier will make it so that as we copy the formula across the various columns, it will always seek to match the student's name in the first row to the second column on the copy tab, the column where student names are recorded when you make a submission. If we did not do this, the formula would instead attempt to match the first student's name to the correct column, column B, the second student's name to column C, the third student's name to column D, and so on. Once these two absolute cell reference modifiers have been added, the formula in cell B3 should look like this. We're now ready to copy this formula across columns to make attendance records for each individual student. With cell B3 highlighted, click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag to the right. Drag until you run out of student names and then release. Once you release, the formulas will auto-populate and update. Next, let's copy the formula down rows to create room for plenty of submissions. With the range you just selected still selected, B3 through however many students you have on your record, click on the lower right of the rightmost cell in the range and drag down. I'm going to drag to row 100 that matches the 98 possible records that I created earlier. At this point, assuming you have entered at least one record on the form, you should see some cells with X in them. That indicates the students who attended particular class meetings. The final step on this tab is to create a formula that will count the number of times each student has been recorded as attending. In cell B2, type the following formula. This formula counts the number of values, literally every X, in the range between B3, the first attendance record, and the last row in column B. With cell B2 selected, click on the bottom right of the cell and drag right to copy the formula for each student's name. Now we're ready to revisit the Attendance tab to summarize these data in a single, easy-to-read table. In cell D2, the first cell under Attend, type the following formula. Make sure you select the entire range of cells for students on your roster. This will transpose the values we just created, the number of times each student has attended, making them a vertical list rather than a horizontal one. Now let's create a count of the total number of class meetings. In cell E2, the first cell under Meetings, type the following formula. Once again, we're going to need to add an absolute value modifier. This modifier will go between A and 2 to hold this reference constant. 
This formula checks to see whether B2 is empty. If it is, it returns a blank value. If it is not empty, it counts the number of submitted responses. Once the formula is entered, copy the formula down. With cell E2 highlighted, click on the lower right corner and drag down. Once again, I'm going to drag down 100 rows. Finally, we're ready to calculate students' attendance grades. In cell C2, the first cell under attendance, type the following formula. This formula will divide the value of D2, the number of times attended, by the value of E2, the total number of class meetings, and multiply that value by 100, providing you with a simple percentage of attendance that can be used as an attendance grade. The round part of the command specifies that the formula should round to a maximum of one decimal point. We're ready to copy this formula down as well. Suppose you wanted to provide students with a free absence, though. Instead of using the previous formula, in cell C2, type the following. This formula checks to see whether the total number of meetings exceeds the student's number of times attended. If that's true, it will add 1 to the student's number of times attended and calculate the grade based on that. If the number of meetings is not greater than the number of meetings attended, however, the same simple percentage is calculated. If you wish to use this formula, simply copy it down. The system that we have created here is easily extendable. For example, you could add another tab for a gradebook and then pull attendance data automatically from this tab. This concludes the tutorial for using Google Docs and your smartphone to track student attendance. I hope that if you give the system a try that you find it as easy and quick to use as I do.